Hello everyone. Um, it's an improvised talk. Well, it's one of my old talks, so I will be discovering the slides with you. Uh, it's nothing to do with security. It's just um, so. Out of you people, who is a Java developer? Okay, who is a Scala developer? Okay, so this is more for Java people. The, the talks I like to make are like, hey, Java people. Java is eight is cool, but you know there are more outside. So I'm kind of trying to showcase some of the things we can do with a proper functional language. Okay, so. Uh, we can skip that. So, quick introduction. So, we're just going. We're going to build a Sudoku solver using functional idioms in um, Scala. Hopefully, you have a bit of fun. Some disclaimers. I'm not a Scala expert. I'm a Java developer. I learn uh, functional programming on the side. So, I look at Scala. I look at Haskell. Um, this original idea was developed in a Scala meetup. I think in not this year, the year before. Uh, it's not meant to be a fast Sudoku solver. It's just meant to be like a fun. And it does not solve hard Sudokus, because uh, the hard Sudokus are not deterministic. Um, you can't solve them with logic, you need to uh, do a search. Okay, so probably everyone knows um, Sudoku, but just to summarize, to, to, um, so we have uh, nine by nine grids, and filled with numbers from one to nine, and the goal is to fill the grid with numbers, and there are uh, three rules. The first rule is that in each of the rows, there needs to be number from one to nine exactly once, it's the same for rows, and it's the same for the nine squares. So three rules. Um, before we actually write the solver, we need to learn some features about Scala. So we'll do a brief introduction. I don't know if you can actually see the code. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see? Yeah? So the first thing in uh, Scala is called a, a, a trait and a case classes. So the trait here is a, like an interface in Scala, saying that here I have a, a shape it will be an interface in, Scala, in Java, in Scala, it's a, it's a trait. Um, then case classes are basically telling Scala what are the possible implementations of that interface. And here we have some syntactic sugar compared to Java, is that I don't need to declare constructors and uh, se uh, getters and setters. All I do is I just write the case class, let's say circle, D a double, extends shape, and that's going to give me a constructor, a getter, setter, and it's an immutable data structure. So for my shape, I have a circle and a rectangle, let's say. And one of the very cool features of um, case classes is that I can do pattern matching on them. In, in Java, we like to write the polymorphism, we write it inside the implementation, so we would write my shape print, we would write, we would write one in circle, one in rectangle, but in Scala, they like to keep things in one place. So the, we just write only one shape print method that takes a shape, and then I can do a match. And because Compiler knows that there's only two possible implementations of shape. I can do a case circle and a case rectangle. And the really interesting thing here is that actually this is a lambda. That when I do this, I can extract the D from my circle, which is the diameter. And then in this lambda, I can use this lambda here to say my circle has this diameter. And it's the same for the rectangle. I extract the width and the height and I can do something. So if I create um, a circle and a rectangle, if I run this, call it run this, and this is using a, if you know about it, it's called toot, it actually runs, uh, when I, this, this, scale is, this slides are made in Scala, when I run the slide, it will actually execute that code, so this is executed code. Um, okay, so there are immutable classes, and this is quite useful for, for pattern matching. In this um, Sudoku solver, I use the vector library. So the vector library, I kind of like to think it's a bit of a dark magic. If you look at the performance, EC means effective, effectively constant time. And it's effectively constant time across all operations. I don't know if anyone knows why it does that. All I'm saying is I see that I say, yes, please, I'm going to use it for free. So I'm going to be using vectors a lot. So in this next slide, some of these methods are, you know, if you've been using Java 8 and lambdas, you'll be familiar with them. So the first one is filter. It's quite simple. I take a vector of type A, and I have a Predicate. A predicate is a function from A to Boolean, and it returns a new vector of type A, which will have, which will be uh, lesser or we call in size. So if I have a vector one to three, and I filter by saying I only want the x that are even, then I'm just getting vector two. And again, this is compiled code. That's why it's a bit ugly here. Um, the next one is map. We know map in streams. So if I have a vector of type A and a function from A to B, then I get a vector of type B. So here, uh, I use the same type, but just an example. If I have vector one, two, three, 
if I do a map with the function that does times two, in the end I get vector two, four, six. Pretty straightforward. Now there is flat map. So what's the difference between map and flat map? That's another story. <laughs> um, but here the difference is the, in, in the signature. In the map, the function goes from A to B, and I still return a vector of B. And in the flat map, I read the function goes from A to vector of B. But I don't return vector of vector of B, I only vector, return vector of B. That's why this is where the, the flattening comes. So as an example, if I use vector 1, 2, 3, and I pass a lambda that creates a vector of two elements. If I had a map, I would have a vector of vector. But because I have a flat map, I'm basically just saying 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. It puts everything into one map. So pretty straightforward. Now this is the slightly um, complex one, but it's not that difficult, but it takes time to wrap your head around. So just jumping ahead a bit, how do I represent a matrix? A matrix is a vector of rows or vectors of columns. So here I will choose vector of rows. So my matrix of 16 numbers, I'm going to have four, ve four rows, 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 9, 12, etc. And then my matrix will be a vector of those. So the type would be vector, vector of int. And here, remember that the vector is my rows. So what if I would like to have a vector that contains all in the elements in a square? That's why we're doing this. So the group operator, what it does is that if I have a vector of vector, if I say uh, group in two, I'm going to get, basically, I'm going to chop my, ma my matrix in two. So here I'm going to have a first matrix with just the top half and a second matrix with just the top bottom, so the, bot uh, the bottom part. So if I look at the, the result here, I'm actually getting a list. So I have list list vectors. So in reality, I have two half matrix matrices, the one with the top two rows and then the one with the bottom rows. And why is it useful? That if I have some um, arguments, which is the row and the, and, the, um, and the column, I can target what I want in my matrix. So what I do is I, I have my grouped matrix, so I have two half. And let's say that here I want row index 1, so that's here, and column index 0, so I want to target that bit. So first I get my, my G, my G is my list of matrices, and I, it's a bit like a binary search. I want to go into second half, so I basically select the second half. So now, at this point, I have this row and this row. But basically what I want is I want to get rid of this. So what do I do? I use the flat map operator. So this flat map oper uh, operator will give me a handle on each of the rows. And then I group the row again. So I could group again. And then I select the index. So here it's going to take this, split in half, I take the first bit. This one, split in half, take the first bit. And then because it's a flat map, I'm getting 9, 10, 13, 14. 9, 10, 13, 14. This is maybe the only slide that it's a bit, you know, if you, if you sit down and you look at it, it's okay. It's just maybe in a presentation like this and the code is far, it's maybe not obvious, but it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. Another thing that I don't know why we had, don't have this in Java really, tuples. Um, if I just write in Scala one, two, three, it automatically creates a syntactic sugar for a tuple types and I can just do underscore one, underscore two, underscore three and it works still, I don't know, nine or maybe more, I'm not sure. But it's very, it's very, it's very convenient. Um, another useful one, thing called zip with index. So basically, if I have a vector, if I zip with index, I'm going to get a vector of tuples. The first element is the element of the list, and the second is the index. So if I have A, B, C, I get A, 0, B, 1, C, 2. And we're going to be using this letter to access the coordinate inside the matrix. Now, transpose operator. So as I said, if you have a matrix, you can see it uh, as a vector of rows or a vector of columns. And the transpose operator does the, the transition between the two. So, you know, you might have seen this in math. You know, if you have one, two, which is a matrix one, two, it becomes a matrix, um, sorry, matrix two, one, makes matrix one, two. If you have a square matrix, it just flips everything around the diagonal. And here, if I have this, which is um, a matrix where I, I have three rows, so one, two, three, four, five, six, if I transpose it, I basically get, um, sorry, I had, I uh, basically get two columns, one, three, five, two, four, six. Okay, so now we have all of the building blocks to build the Sudoku solver. And what I like about this talk is that the amount of code is really small. There's a lot of comments and we will be solving a simple Sudoku in a very small amount of code. 
So first, this is the, the most important part in any um, at least function programming Scala or in maybe any problem is the, is the modeling. So, uh, so a Sudoku is made of cells. So we're going to have a trait cell. And basically, the, as from the solver perspective, there's only two possible cases for my cells. Either I know what's in the cell, so I call this fixed, and it has an integer, which is there. This is the number that it's in that cell. So it's either it's the number I was giving in the beginning, or it's the number I've guessed. Or it's something called, I call undetermined, which is basically it has a bunch of possible values. And here it has a list of values. And both of them extend cell. And my Sudoku is a vector of vector of cell. And here I just say it's a vector of rows. And the goal of the Sudoku server will be to, at the beginning, I'm going to start with the loads of these. And I'm going to try to reduce that list to shrink all my possibilities until hopefully I have a list of just fixed cells. So then I create another case class, which is my Sudoku. And as I said, my Sudoku has a grid. And a grid is a vector or vector of cell. And I said that Sudoku has three rules. So three rules, three method. The method have the same signature. I'm going to check if a value is allowed in a row, if a value is allowed in a column, and if a value is allowed in a square. Three rules. And the signature is, I have a position, which is a tuple. The first one is the row, the second is the column, and the value. So I'm saying, can I put a five in this position? And the method say, true or false? And you know, another actually interesting thing in Scala, this is a valid Scala operator. If you, you know, if you want to write just some stopping method and you don't want to implement them straight away, you just write this and it compiles. Of course, it doesn't run at runtime, but maybe one day they will do something that writes the code for you, who knows. Um, so, the first rule, the first method, we want to check if a value is allowed in a row. So the rule is, you can only have one of each numbers in a row. So all I need to check is I need to check, I have my row, I need to check, is this, does this row contain a fixed cell of that type? So, well, I have my grid, which is grid. I use position underscore one to get the column. So this gives me a vector. Then I use, um, then that's it. So I have my vector and I can just say contains fixed value. And actually this is another example of pattern matching. Behind the scene, because uh, in, in Java this wouldn't work because my, um, my list is not a list of fixed, it's a list of cell. But behind the scenes, Scala will be able to pattern match and you will see, does, does it contain a, uh, a cell of type fixed with this value? And something I didn't see before, it, it has automatically all of the um, e equals and hash code. If I have two instances of fixed with the same number, they are exactly equal, right? Actually, in memory, they will be the same. So, and then I just have the negation in front. So, my value is allowed in my row if in my row I do not have this number already. That's straightforward. And actually, it's very similar for the other one, if it's, if it's allowed in the column, except I need to access the column. Well, to access the column, first I transpose my grid, like we saw, so we flip everything around the diagonal. So now, instead of having a list of rows, I have a list of columns. So now I can use the position number two to see if it contains fixed or value. And again, I use the negation. It's allowed if I didn't see this number already in my um, in my column. Now, this would be difficult, but we've already seen that code. So now I want to check if it's allowed in a square. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get the square number. So that's really easy. I do the Euclidean division. So that gives me a number from 0 to 2, which is the position of the square, the row and the column. And then we do what we did before. I take my grid, I chop into three. So this gives me a top Sudoku grid, a middle Sudoku grid, and a bottom Sudoku grid. Now, using the first uh, row, Oh, um, coordinate for the um, square, I get, I get the correct um, slice of my grid. Now I do a flat map. Flat map gives me a handle on all of the rows. I chop all the rows in three again. I select the piece I want, and this gives me the square cells is a list, a vector, sorry, with all of the, um, with all of the, my, my numbers, and I just say, does it, again, does it contain fixed? Three rules, three simple methods. So far, not a lot of code. And you know, just to make things easy, I just write a wrapper, a method that says, is value allowed? That is going to run the three rules. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And now is the final slide. That's it. That's the Sudoku solver. So let's go through that together. This is a method that is part of the Sudoku class. So because everything is immutable in Scala, 
this filter method is a method of the class Sudoku. It's going to return a new Sudoku, which is hopefully is going to be making one step towards the solution. So what do I do? Well, my, my method that I have, they use the position x, y, and I don't have that. So we're going to be using the zip with index. So I take my grid and I do zip with index. So now I have a vector, instead of having a vector of rows, I have a vector of rows, but with the row ordinate as well. So I can do a map this, this time. And here I can use another pattern matching. I can, the only reason I'm doing this is that it gives me a lambda. If I do map case uh, row, row index, all of the rows in my vector have of this form, but this gives me a lambda. Now I can access the row and the row index. So now I need to chop my row again. So again, I take my row and I do another zip with index. And now with the first zip with index, I have the row ordinate. With the second zip with index, I have the column. So now I can do the, the pattern matching. What I want to be solving, if you remember, we have this fixed and the indeterminate. I want to be, I don't care about the fixed, they're done. I want to target the indeterminate cells and I want to shrink them. I want to um, reduce my search space. So I only care about, I do a case and determine values. So now, just to be really clear, in my hands I have a row index, a column index, and the possible list of values that so far is allowed in that cell. So when I start at the beginning, I just put fixed values where the problem is, and everywhere else I put uh, undetermined with number from 1 to 9. And then I return, this is important, a new undetermined um, cell, but this time it's going to have the values filtered, and remember the filter takes a predicate, and the predicate is my function that I, I said is value allowed for, and I give it the row index, the column index, and the value. So this is going to look at one of the empty cells. Oh, we have the number from 1 to 9. It goes 1, no, not allowed, because there's a 1 here. 2, not allowed, this in the square. 3, not allowed, this in the column. And it's going to shrink. And at some point, it's going to stop, because it's, for that round, it's done all it could. And here, I need to, the code needs to be complete. So in, this kind of means in any other case. So here it means fixed, just return the untouched cell. So if I have a fix, just return it. And now, this last step is important because I might have a moment where I have undetermined cells which have a, a list of values of size 1. So I can do a pattern matching with a guard that says value size equals 1. If this is the case, I can convert it to a fixed and I just use the head. Otherwise, do the same. And this is now, I've, now I finished this. So now I check. Is my filtered grid here, is it the same as my original grid? If it's the same, it means two cases. Either I solve the problem or I reach a point where I can't uh, progress anymore. And I, as I said at the beginning, hard Sudokus cannot be solved this way. You can't solve them with logic. You need to, make, you need to go and make hypotheses and you need to search, you need to do uh, heuristics and that sort of things. So this is just a simple example. Otherwise, recursively, we create a new Sudoku with the filtered and we call filter again. And that's it. That's finished. So um, the codes and the slides are on my GitHub, Sazatiel Sudoku. Um, you know, there's a bit more error handling, especially when it comes to parsing. Um, you know, the CSV files. It's tested. There is a um, there is a program that generates Sudoku for you. So I generated a bunch of them and I uh, tested on this. Um, Anton Loss was kind of the guy who had the original idea of this, and then I developed it. And this is my friend Julian, who is my coach in functional programming and Scala and everything. So that's it.